Welcome to Financial Assets Part 2. In this module, we'll study investments in marketable securities, in particular, short-term investments in marketable securities. Short-term investments in marketable securities include investments in stocks or bonds of another economic entity. The characteristics of short-term investments include that they are readily marketable. That just means that it would be easy to sell the stock or bond on the market should we choose to sell it. That means they're almost as liquid as cash, and it also means that they're reported as a current asset on the balance sheet. As we discussed in the previous module, short-term investments in marketable securities are reported at the market value. The market value is how much we would be able to sell the bond or stock for on the market if we chose to sell it. We use the balance sheet date to determine the market value. Return on the investment of stocks or bonds would be interest. Interest would be received on bonds. Dividends, dividends are received on stock and or an increase in the market value, and that could occur with either bonds or stock. Here we have the statement of financial position for General Electric Company. If you recall from one of our earlier modules, the statement of financial position is another name for balance sheet. The second item on the statement of financial position is investment securities. The investment securities represent General Electric's investment in marketable securities. If we wanted to learn more about this investment, we would look at note three in the financial statement notes. When we account for the marketable security, we begin with the purchase of marketable securities. We have an example. We purchased 2,000 shares of ABC company capital stock at $40 per share. Here, we're paying cash and we're receiving capital stock of ABC company. Cash is an asset, so we have one asset that's decreasing. Investment in the marketable security of ABC capital stock is also an asset, so we have that asset increasing and cash decreasing. We don't have an income statement effect when we purchase the securities. Represented with a journal entry, we see that the purchase of 2,000 shares of $40 per share stock would result in a debit to marketable securities for $80,000, increasing the asset marketable securities, and a credit to cash for $80,000, decreasing the asset cash for $80,000. This is the accounting treatment for the purchase of marketable securities, whether that whether you're purchasing capital stock or bonds. Next, we have the recognition of investment revenue. The example here is that we received 75 cents per share dividend on the 2000 shares of ABC company. We're receiving 75 cents per share or a check because we own the stock of another company. Since we're receiving cash, asset cash goes up. We're receiving dividend, which is a revenue. So our revenues go up, which makes net income go up and equity increase as well. To see the, how this is treated with a journal entry, we would be debiting cash for the total amount of the, of the cash received, which is 75 cents per share times 2,000 shares, and crediting dividend revenue for the same amount of $1,500. The next accounting event that we will consider is the sale of an investment if we're selling it at a gain. When we sell an investment at a price more than what we paid for it, we would have a gain on that sale. If we sell an investment for less than what we pay for it, we have a loss on the sale of that investment. Our example here is we sold 600 shares of ABC Company for $52 per share. 
when we sell stock at an amount greater than the purchase price, we will have an increase in a gain. A gain is like a revenue, which will also increase net income and increase equity. We're selling the securities and receiving cash, so our asset cash will increase, but we're giving up our stock, so our investment will decrease. When we look at the journal entry for recording this transaction, we're receiving $31,200 in cash. Recall that we're selling 600 shares for $52 per share, so $52 times 600 shares is $31,200. We purchase those securities at $40 per share, and $40 times 600 shares represents our purchase price, so we're crediting marketable securities for $24,000. The difference between our purchase price and our selling price is $12. Remember, we're selling at $52. We purchased at $40, so our gain is $12 per share. $12 times 600 shares is equal to 7,200. So we have a gain on the sale of investment of 7,200. We'll take a look at what would happen if we sold the investment at a loss. If we're selling at a loss, that means we're selling at an amount less than what we paid for the stock. So recall that we paid $40 per share for the stock. This time we're selling it for $36 per share. We're still receiving cash, so our asset cash will go up. However, we have a loss. A loss is like an expense, so the expenses on our income statement will go up, which will make our net income go down and our equity will go down. In addition, we're giving up the shares of stock, so our investment in marketable securities will decrease as well. Taking a look at how this would appear as a journal entry, we have an increase of cash of 21,600. That's our selling price of $36 per share times 600 shares. We have a credit to our marketable securities of 24,000. That's the $40 per share that we paid for the stock multiplied by the 600 shares. We have a loss of $4 per share because we sold it for 36 and paid 40. So we have a loss of $4 per share. $4 per share times 600 shares is equal to $2,400 total loss on this transaction. The last thing that we want to discuss is adjusting to fair market value. The remaining shares have a fair market value of 60,200. That's 1,400 shares at a price of $43 per share. That means that we have an increase in the value of the shares from when we purchased it. Because recall, we purchased it at $40 per share. When we have an increase in the value, we will be increasing our equity and increasing the book value of our marketable security to its fair market value. So instead of reporting 56,000 on the balance sheet, we want to report 60,200. The way we do that is by increasing the book value of our asset, our marketable security asset by $4,200. To see how the journal entry would look, we would be debiting marketable securities by 4,200 and crediting unrealized holding gain on the investment by $4,200. By debiting the marketable security account, we go from the original book value of $56,000 to a book value of $60,200, which is the fair market value. The unrealized holding gain or loss on the investment account is used for the, adjust for the adjustment. This is a stockholder's equity account. This is an unrealized gain and does not flow through the income statement on most investments in marketable securities.
if the market value is below cost, we will use the unrealized holding loss and we will debit the account. If the market value is above cost, we have an unrealized holding gain, so we would be crediting the unrealized holding gain or loss account. In review, investments in marketable securities include investments in stocks or bonds of other economic entities. The investments in marketable securities are almost as liquid as cash because they have a ready market value and they're easily sold. They're reported on the balance sheet at fair market value. Important economic events include the purchase of the stocks or bonds, receipt of interest or dividends, the sale of stocks or bonds, and the adjustment of stocks or bonds to fair market value. This concludes our discussion on investments in marketable securities.